All right, welcome back to the channel. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at this Dell Wise Thin Client. Now, was I wise to buy this Wise? Um, stay tuned, we'll see. So scouring the eBay, um, looking at computers and stuff, this kind of popped up on my uh, recommendations suggested on the eBay. Been buying a lot of stuff on eBay and uh, been having real good success. So this popped up and this um, initially was priced at $15 with free shipping. So I was like, eh, sketchy. And then next thing you know, a couple of days later, seller reduced the price to $12. Plus I get free shipping. Sure, why not? For $12, I'll take a risk at it. I've never dealt with these Dell Ys. I've never dealt with these small little form factor computers or anything like that. And I was curious, are they good? What are they for? And whatnot. From what I gather, these are actually used in hospitals, some computers, doctor's offices. And pretty much to make this very simple, um, you put a software on here, it logs onto a server and everything is run and saved off the server. And this is just kind of a way to access it and just input data. These things come with a really small hard drive. You really don't put anything on it. And like I said, everything is done remotely on the server. That's where you log in. That's where you do your billing, whatever uh, important stuff that you're going to do is done on the server. It's not done on this thing over here. So, um, this one was actually uh, made in 2015 looking at the specs on it. It's a Dell Wise ZX0 Thin Client. has an AMG G T56N. Clocked at 1.65 gigahertz. Ooh. 8 gigs of RAM, which is one of the things that intrigued me about it because it has 8 gigs of DDR3 RAM and it came with a 16 gig um, SSD or hard drive, whatever they call that, but it's like an SSD. So I'm like 16 gigs, there's really not much I can do with it, so I want to see if it works. Um, disclaimer, I've actually gone ahead and opened it up and tried it out so I know everything works because lately I've had a bad habit of buying things on eBay, using it like months later and finding out that it doesn't work. So kind of went ahead and jumped the gun on that. So a little disclaimer on that. So this has been opened up before by me. Uh, in the front, you got your audio, you got your uh, mic, power button, little LED over there. You got two USBs in the front and in the back, you have DVI. Your display port, two USBs, USB 3.0, and your Ethernet and your power cable. It does have a stand, which is kind of nice, and that's pretty much all you get with it. Even though it's $12, it didn't come with the uh, little power adapter over here. I actually had to get on the Amazon, and I bought this for like $15 over here. Uh, it's an AC adapter, TP06919342W, uh, 1.5 amps max. 19 volts, yada yada. So, yeah, got that on the Amazon. I'll put a link below for that for anybody interested in buying this. You need to buy that. I think that's why they sell them so cheap. They don't typically come with um, any OS, which is any computer you buy online. They don't come with the power adapter and they don't come with um, antennas if you get the Wi Fi. I've seen a couple of these with the Wi Fi and they don't have the antennas. So, you got to buy all that junk separate. But hey, what, for $10, $15? What can you do? So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna open this up and we're gonna take a look inside. Uh, wanna give it a little um, DLM Tech Garage loving and make sure that everything is running 100% to the best performance on it. And then uh, we'll talk about what we can do with it, some tips, some mods, and see, will this thing game? Can we upgrade the hard drive? Keep watching, we're gonna explain all that in just a second. All right, so I got my camera set up and hopefully this thing doesn't fall down and create a disaster. So um, we're gonna go ahead and open this up. It's got these uh, thumb screws over here that come out real easy on the bottom. Just pop those out real quick. Done. Now it comes with uh, two screws over here, one and two. I've already taken these off. And these on the top, if you can see right over there. Let's take these out real quick. And with that out, you go ahead and slide it back. And this thing pops off very easy. So here we are. Now it uses your regular DDR3 memory, the type that this one uses, and they're pretty stuck in here pretty good, is uh, DDR3, don't know if that's coming up in the camera, there we go, 4 gigs of uh, 12800, so that's the memory that it uses. It's got two sticks of it, I'm going to pop these back in here. Now this computer was actually really clean considering, and it was very impressive. Now the hard drive it uses, I see if it comes right over here, is this little 16 gig MLC SATA module uh, H, uh, HF, a pacer, warranty void if removed. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna take a look at is this. Now, 
this is the hard drive and I'm saying to myself, how am I going to put a bigger hard drive in here? Uh, not too many options. Uh, you have a SATA port over here. You have, I think this is a RJ95, whatever it's called. There's a little adapter right over here and you can actually wire a SATA port to it. I've seen a couple of people do that and that is one way to put a, a SATA hard drive. You do have room to kind of hang one in here. Eh, don't want to do that. So this thing actually has a screw, which I don't know what I did with it, but it had a screw right over here. And this slides right out, real easy. And as you can see, it's just a SATA uh, connector with a SATA power connector. So now you have a uh, SATA hard drive. I bought these crucial ones. They were on sale on the Amazon for like $19.99. I bought two of them. It's always good to have a good SATA, especially when you're flipping computers. So I went ahead and I popped this out. And when I popped this out, look how small that chip is. I've never opened one of these up before because I guess I've never been that curious. And this is actually the memory chips for it. So I took it out, did some comparison, side by side comparison, and they're pretty much for the most part the same height. Well, they're the same connector point, not the same height. This one, uh, the one from the Crucial is a little wider. It's slightly longer. And just kind of mocking it up into this computer right over here. Um, it looks like it'll fit in clear. So now, if you look right over here, you actually see a little... Um, this is where it kind of screws down to for the other one. And it's not going to clear that. So what I went ahead and did, just as a precaution, because you don't want metal touching electronics, I just take a piece of electrical tape... And all I did was just put this right across it, you know, non-conductive, just right there. And just, just to make sure that it doesn't short out. Put that in, let's see if this comes right in here. Uh, this is kind of hard to do one-handed this way, but if you kind of slide it in a slight angle and push, there you go. Say the hard drive is installed. Now, just to kind of give you a little spoiler alert, this does work. So I've already installed Windows on this and I've had no issues. But if you get one of these and you want to upgrade the hard drives, you can do it. I do recommend getting like a 240 gig at least. 120 is a little small, but uh, for testing purposes and even for a basic office um, thin client, works good. And I actually came up with another idea as far as playing any type of game or anything. So that's how that works. So the next thing I want to do is I actually want to uh, work on this heat sink over here because this thing is already five years old. And... Just as we know, we've seen any thermal paste gets hot. This thing gets really hot. Now, as far as Fahrenheit goes, I've actually put a thermal probe on it, and it was actually at about 125, which ain't terrible, but there's no fan, and I know these things are not really like processors hungry because they're very simple devices, but if I want to try to get a game going on this, I want to give this thing every best chance I got. So I went ahead, and we're going to take this thing out, and we're going to put fresh thermal paste. I say, why not, you know? Let's give it a best chance we can. And there are our CPUs. As you can see, this is our little dried up thermal paste right there. Okay, um, yeah, it's a little dried up, not too good. And our CPUs and GPU is right over there. Now this actually comes with a Radeon, it's a 6000 series GPU. Uh, you can actually put a, uh, allocate the memory up to uh, two gigs of RAM on it. I kept it for one gig just for testing and game purposes. And um, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and clean this out real quick. Put this thing back up, boot it up, and we'll see. How does this thing run Windows? Does it game really well? You know, and we'll find out. So now, before I give my final thoughts on this, there's a few things I want to mention on this. So let's take a look at the BIOS. So now if you go into the BIOS, um, there's no UEFI on this one. So if you're going to install Windows, just do it off a regular USB uh, thumb drive without the UEFI, and you should be fine on that one. Uh, something to consider, too, is the frame buffer size over here. This is the video card memory, and um, you could put up to 2 gigs on it. I have found that the more you increase the memory, the hotter this thing is going to run. And when it does that, you're actually going to run into some thermal throttling issues on it. So... Um, if you're going to use it as an office PC, just go ahead and put auto and it'll just allocate as it needs and it'll manage, manage the temperature a lot better. That's what I have found. Um, if you're going to do some gaming, one gig and you'll be fine with the eight gigs of RAM, but you might want to make sure that you have some type of fan or add some type of additional cooling to this to help keep it from thermal throttling because I have found that already that uh, running one gig of RAM, just trying to uh, use Windows, this thing pops up to about 85 degrees Celsius. But if I run at auto, the temperature stay more manageable around the 60 degrees Celsius range. It has no fans, so just keep that in mind when you're doing this. 
All right, so our Dell Wise is put back together and she runs pretty good. So the 120 gig solid state hard drive is really what you're gonna need if you wanna uh, run Windows on it and play some type of games or anything. So now let's talk about the gaming aspect of this. The gaming aspects of this is pfft, not that great. Um, you can install Steam on it and you can play a lot of the classic games. I was able to play Final Fantasy VII, VIII, uh, Chrono Trigger, and some of the remastered games uh, from LucasArts. And I didn't have too many issues on it. I want to get more footage on it, but um, I think I need to get a new memory card for this camera as I lost some of the footage. We attempted to play CSGO and that was just, I couldn't even get the game to start. It was so horrible and the experience was, was not great on it. Don't recommend it. So um, I did try to play some uh, get Epic Games on it, but the program and loader just would not run properly. I could not even get... Um, Fortnite to even go or, or install so just wanted to give it a try so but as far as like steam you can play like a lot of the classic and old games this thing works really good for like uh classic emulation games nintendo super nintendo even nintendo 64 um i was able to play a little playstation on that and as far as the experience of this like i said it's not a gaming computer by far it's not i paid like 12 bucks for this and i was just curious if we can play some games on it and you can you can play some of the classics and you could play some of the remasters on steam and still have a good experience as far as an office computer it works great i mean i'm able to play uh use windows 10 on it no hiccups run smooth we're able to play on the youtube watch some videos um stream and all that type of good stuff well not stream but just watch videos and um office works great on it well open office and all that stuff and you have no issues now the one coolest thing about this and i want you to take a listen it's dead silent because it has no fans so this is a silent computer which is awesome the temperatures i mean they're not much of an issue because realistically you're not going to push the load on this and if you are trying to push the load on it you ain't going to get good results because this thing does not like to uh be uh it does not like to uh, get intense loads. And a lot of it that you're going to run into with this um, Dell Wise computer here is that the CPU just doesn't have the power. It's a 1.65 um, dual processor, and that's about it. It's going to work great for Windows, but as far as your gaming experience, eh, not so much. Um, I got this for 12 bucks. I'm actually going to test the market on it and see if we could flip it and see if we can make some coin. I'm pretty sure that um, I've got 12, 20 for that, 32 plus 20 for a solid state. So $52. I'm pretty sure I could probably sell this as from 80 to $100 as an office entry office computer with no issues. Um, I've been selling a lot of those lately because the whole everybody now is. Um, transitioning to Google Classroom and that whole learning experience and people have been asking me for this left and right. So I'm sure we could flip that, make some good money off of that, or at least double my profit. I mean, I'm not going to get like 200, no, by no means, but I'm sure we could get about 80 to hundred dollars, probably the hundred dollar range on it. So um, if you want to find out if we were able to flip this, uh, just definitely leave me a comment and uh, we'll give you an update on that. So the Dell Wise, is it a good buy for the price? Heck yeah. I mean,